Hey, this is a Labyrinth here. This popped up on my feed. Just wanted to share it with you. It's less than a minute. It's from a show that Tim Pool hosts called Culture War. I watch Tim every now and then. I'll give my thoughts on the back half. Well, we didn't get rid of religion in the classroom. We just swapped it out. There was a void that was created. Any worldview is a faith and religion, even atheists and agnostics. They are believing in something. There is no reason on earth that if you do not believe in a revealed law or a natural law, any sort of law in society, that we should have order in the classroom. Why would it not be just dog eat dog world to claw over each other? Well, you must be respectful. Why? Well, there is no standard that we're adhering back to. And that's when you start to dig away at the moral decay of our country we're like why, why are we heading in this particular direction it is because you can justify anything that you do in a society when you have no moral foundation yeah. or law and when you take prayer and the scriptures out of schools you were taking law out of schools he was almost there wasn't he he was almost there there was a couple of sketchy moments where he talks about revealed law and natural law well, revealed law is of a religious bent, and with his uh, American accent and white skin, I don't believe he's talking about Islam or Judaism. I think he's talking about Christianity, specifically at the end where he brings in prayer and scripture. That's a problem, huge problem, simply because we have an implied separation of church-state based on the Founding Fathers' documents. You tear down that wall, you adopt Christianity as a national religion, we're no longer a republic or democracy. There's nothing to argue anymore. We become a theocracy. The kid was almost there. Natural law, if you don't know, refers to, you know, you can have God, you can have some sort of spiritual belief like in nature or reason. I know personally that's how I live my life. I call it the real, R-E-L, reason, empathy, and logic. Most people I know incorporate reason even if they're religious. Because even if you're religious, if any Christian or Muslim or Jew or whatever... When it, especially when it comes to the desert religions, if you follow them to a T, we have to put you in jail because eventually God's law breaks man's law. And you can believe in your God all you want to, but when you start breaking the law, the law that we have created based on what is what benefits the people, at least that's what we tell ourselves, you become a problem to society. This guy wants scripture and prayer back in classrooms because he thinks the world has fallen, or at least the West has fallen, because there's not prayer and scripture in there. No. And when he says atheists and agnostics have a belief system, again, yeah, we do, but it's the same belief system that Christians and Muslims and Jews have who are a part of society. It is reason. Because the thing about it is, the Bible says it's okay to kill children who backtalk you. And the Bible is pretty good on slavery. I don't remember a verse growing up in the church that said slavery was a bad thing. The Bible says that women are essentially property for the most part. And if you're like, well, if it's Old Testament versus New Testament, well, Matthew 5, 17 disagrees with you. Because Jesus states in there that he did not come to abolish the law. He came to fulfill it. He's not here to abolish the law or the prophets. He's here to fulfill the law. And that nothing will change until all has been achieved through the law under heaven. The law being 613 commandments in the Torah or what Christians know as the first five books of the Bible. 613, you know the top 10, you know the first 10, the greatest hits, but there's literally 613 commandments in there about how to fight war, how to treat slaves, how to treat women, how to treat family, it's all in there. And Jesus is for this. Some of those laws being very anti-homosexual, 
very anti um, interracial. And these kids want those scriptures up on the wall. I don't want them. I don't want BLM flags. I don't want rainbow flags. What I want is civics. How about that? If we're going to have a religion, let's create the national religion. And it is, we have a religion dedicated to the Constitution. How about that? That'd be nice. We bring in the Constitution and we bring in the Bill of Rights and we bring in the amendments that have been added to and voted on since its initial creating creation. And we talk and teach kids what their rights are, what their responsibilities are as American citizens. How about we do that? That'd be cool. I'd be all for that. I don't want to see another rainbow flag. I don't want to see another black fist up in the air. And I damn sure don't want to see a cross in a classroom. Let's go with civics. Let's, set, let's make that the national religion. Technically, it was. Except we didn't refer to it as a religion because the Founding Fathers counted on people to be essentially reasonable. And every generation, it seems, we lose a little reason, gain a little insanity. And it's not just now. People were just as stupid 100 years ago. Look at the War of the Worlds, the radio broadcast back in the 1930s. You had people turning on the radio. They thought Martians were attacking. And so they ran for the hills. The rumor is some even killed themselves. But the last thing that they did was turn to another radio station to see if it were actually true. Stupid people have always been around. Anyway, that's just my take. The kid almost had it. But then he had to invoke his Christianity. Revealed law. Scripture and prayer. It's too bad. Anyway, thanks for listening. Take care.